Oh. Oh. Hi, people on the internet. I have an exciting video for you today because we're gonna be working on the focus, but this isn't just any video because some parts came in the mail yesterday that are going to be a game changer. It's gonna take this thing from being a $2,000 pile of hatchback with a roll cage in it and some dirt tires to being a almost rally car. But before I do that, uh, as you can see, there's a pile of crap right there <laughs> sweeping up because I did some work yesterday on the inside of the shell of this car prepping it for paint so I can paint it as well as the cage. I had a bunch of little brackets and tabs and things that held seats and seat belts in that needed to be removed and spot welds to be somewhat successfully drilled out and glue to take off. And then the inside of the door cards, I had to remove some little plastic bits and stuff. So that way when I put the door panel on there, it sits nice and flat. We'll get back to this in a little bit. You see over here, I did get a giant piece of sheet metal that I'm going to cut up with a nibbler and start making patch panels with. All right, let's open up these boxes. Inside this box is a set of custom one-off gravel spec rally coilovers that KW made just for Sir Codsworth. And it took a ton of research and development to actually do this for this car. So shout out to KW for putting in all that effort to making this possible. This is awesome! I like how they put the toolkit inside this little plastic case. It looks like a Nintendo cartridge, kind of. It comes with a little cucumber blanket. That's crazy. Look at that! It's got a remote reservoir. This is so sick! Now this is just a test fit because these are custom spec for this car. They're not just a regular coilover meant for a Focus. It has longer travel but will still work with the suspension geometry that is on that car and they're valved for off-road. This is... In case you're wondering how they came about making these coilovers, what they ended up doing is last year I removed the coil springs from this car in the rear and the front and then articulated the suspension all the way so that way we could calculate the maximum amount of travel possible with this suspension geometry. And then they use those parameters to make the coilovers accordingly. <laughs> Right. Because these coilovers were custom made for this car and this is not just a factory spec focus, there's no guarantee these are going to fit first attempt. Hopefully they will. Hopefully I took enough measurements, but there's a slight possibility they might not. Let's be optimistic though. Hopefully these fit first try. Hopefully. Are you heavy? You're not heavy. Just by eyeballing it underneath here, the one thing that makes me a little bit nervous is how close the strut body comes to this upper control arm right here. Because I have to fit a coilover up inside there. I'm ditching the spring in a bucket setup and just going for a coilover on strut. 15? That's, hell no, it's not a 15. Why does this car got such weird sizes for everything? Oh, there goes that strut. And that's why I lowered the car down, because I knew that thing was just going to go bon voyage once I took that 13 mil nut off. Well, here goes that crusty thing. Thing looks like Spongebob's dick. Yeah, that's going to be a close one, whether that's going to clear that upper control arm, because that spring goes pretty far down. Look how wafer thin this upper control arm is. It's like made out of paper. And this is the part that actually snapped on Richard Hammond's Focus RS on the last episode of the Grand Tour. So we already know this is fairly weak on these cars. I'm legit nervous about this fitting because these were designed by hundreds of pictures that I took for their engineer and sending tons of measurements. And I suck at math, so I might have measured stuff wrong. Who knows? Ugh, I don't wanna scratch these up already. It's really heavy too. I feel like this is a two-person job. Luckily, I don't have a two-person. Don't worry about the paint. It's coming off anyway. Aside from the brake line, that's going to be super close. I got to move the brake line bracket. I 
feel like I'm opening an entire can of worms by looking at this stuff because I want to re-engineer all the suspension. They designed the top half of this coilover to be flexible so you can actually move this in or out. And something that the engineer did tell me I'd probably have to do is right here behind where the strut mounts, which is going to be kind of difficult because this is where the frame rail actually is pinch welded to this back piece of shell that has to get bashed in a little bit so it'll clear the coil over it doesn't have to go much it's just maybe i'd say 10 to 15 millimeters in right here and then it'll clear the coil over as far as the bottom goes this is going to be useless because i'm ditching this spring so i'm kind of thinking this lower piece should just be replaced with a straight rod that has heim joints on either side i just don't know how the rear anti-sway bar would attach in that instance and again, I don't have any way to machine parts. So this upper control arm was going to be an issue. It is going to be an issue. This is going to have to get re-engineered. Time to test fit the front ones. Literally, while I was filming this, I emailed the engineer at KW who developed these coilovers, and he already has a solution for the rear that's brilliant. The Nissan 240SX, I'm not sure if it's S13 or S14, I'll have to look it up, has a very similar upper control arm, except the one on that car has a bend in it to go around a coilover. So possibly I could use one of those and modify it to work, or at the least that gives me a baseline of something that I can use to work with on this car. I think that'll do. Good. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Slight problem. The remote reservoir does not clear the hole right here for the strut mount. So I I don't know if I should drill it out bigger, but then how do I get this head past? I don't know if I can notch it. I, like maybe cut notches. I think that would run to structural issues at that point. I got some exciting news. First, let's go see what those guys are up to. I hear the booth running. All right, I guess Bob the Builder over there is doing something with a table. Anyway, I don't know if you guys recall this Kevlar WRC spec front bumper I had made by Rally Tech in the UK and shipped over here for the car. Oh, come out. It just so happens that the company Rally Tech that made that bumper found the set of the molds for the actual WRC car wide body panels that were used on the WRC car of this generation. And they're going to make a set of wide body front and rear quarter panels and fenders for this car. I mean, these coilovers are straight rally spec coilovers. And I got to redo some of the rear suspension pieces that are going to be tubular just like the wrc car i mean at this rate if i can track down the six speed sequential gearbox and haldex based all-wheel drive system with rear diff i can just i can just build a wrc car Now 
I got these things out of here, I can get these painted up because they're still just raw steel. I'm going to use that POR 15 on them, I think, because the stuff's super durable. And these are probably going to get a little bit of abuse when it comes to adjusting seats and stuff. They're kind of heavy, but they have to be strong. The entire inside of the shell is going to be all gloss white, but these are going to stay the raw aluminum finish. And I think those done in the satin black will give a little bit of contrast in there along with the flocked dashboard even though it's not flock it's just 30 coats of plasti dip super thin i like that better than flock because that flock stuff when it gets in your lungs it's game over ask me how i know there's a ton of debris in here i still need to sweep up and i'm gonna get some more dry ice because i gotta finish right there and right there getting rid of the sound deadening and the wiring in this car so i don't need most of the wiring I don't know if I could do a whole video on that. There's a lot of wiring. I'm gonna redo the whole harness pretty much for the rest of the body. Ouch. How the hell? I don't jungle gym very well. I'm too lanky and tall. Ow. I'm flexible though. A lot of you mentioned before how my battery kill switch in the center console wasn't accessible by the outside of the car and most rally rank sanctioning rule books, that's really hard to say, uh, require it to be as such. So I'm gonna take care of that since I'm undoing everything in here so I can paint. I'm getting my new Uggs all dirty. They're work, they're work Uggs. They're putting in work. I am going to put this guy though up here on the A-pillar, so it is accessible on the outside of the car. At this point, I'm just building this car so I have my own WRC car to flex on people. Some people buy Lamborghinis to flex. I build my own WRC car replica. That's how I flex. Built, not bought. Except you buy all the parts. I never understood that saying, of course it's bought. You didn't give birth to the parts. This is gonna be a dope before and after, bro. Look at how boring that table was. Table. Boring ass. Looks it like a f***ing hotel table. <laughs> now it's got some f***ing modern styling. That gray wash. What the? <laughs> <laughs> it's lunchtime, and I'm gonna get this video up for you guys to watch here within the next hour or so. But before I before I do that, I bought a nibbler. I said that in the beginning of the video. This first one I got right here. It's super thin. It's thundering. I think that's funny. No one's gonna laugh at my stupid jokes. How do I? Man, I bought one that someone's already opened before. That's shitty. You gotta be careful buying stuff on Amazon now, I swear. Like, everything is a scam on there. Nibble. I guess this little gold buck tooth right here is what nibbles the sheet metal. This thing's cool. It looks new, even though the box is opened already. I'm getting ready right now to start doing more work because this is gonna be the next YouTube video. Just because I wanna get a video up for you guys. Look at my fingertip of my glove. I wanna get this video up for you guys today since it's been 72 hours and the last car review I did bombed. Nobody wanted to watch a Hyundai Elantra video. I'm sorry not all my car views are exotic cars. I just, that's not, that's not my life. I'm regular car brunette. Actually, I dyed my hair black. So I'm regular hair, I'm regular car black hair. I don't know what that means. Okay, well, anyway, I'm gonna get to work and you guys can just expect to see the next video doing some fab work and I'm gonna get to nibbling. Actually, I'm gonna nibble my lunch because I think I just got here. Bye.